If you're considering buying or building on Snoqualmie Pass, you're going to want to make sure you watch this video as it'll save you headaches for years to come. We're going to cover things to consider when designing the home, the different locations, and unexpected costs that come up during the build. Let's start with location. So one of the very basic things about Snoqualmie Pass is there's actually two counties. You have King County to the west and Kittitas County to the east. And that county line runs right past Chevron uh, to Summit West, with Summit West being on the King County side. Now this is something to consider when you're deciding which lot or which home to buy because permitting in Kittitas County can be much simpler and a much faster timeline than what is typical from the King County um, Development Department. So neighborhood and school districts might be something that you're considering when doing your build. The King County side, uh, the kids that live there, they go down to the North Bend School District while everybody else in the Kittitas County side goes to Easton. If you're looking for a home to be in a spot that doesn't have an HOA, there's really only two different areas that you can look at, the Yellowstone Road and Conifer. If you want your home to be eligible for a short-term rental, uh, it's very specific on where you can do that. Matter of fact, everything in the Elpenthal side on Elpenthal Road is not uh, permitted or you're not able to do short-term rentals. That includes the condominium associations. Um, most of the neighborhoods to the east in the Kittitas County side do allow for short-term rentals. Next, let's talk about things to consider when designing your home. But before we can even do that, we've got to talk a little bit about snowpack because it makes a big difference in the type of build that has, happens on Snoqualmie Pass compared to other mountain towns. And part of that is Snoqualmie Pass, they average about 400 inches of snow per year, which is a lot. It rivals the rest of the country for most snowpack fallen. But the thing to know about this is it's only 3,000 feet in elevation. So that precipitation can switch from snow to rain really quickly, which affects the amount of weight on your roof. Because of this, um, and depending on the design that you choose, your engineer and the planning department is going to decide on what type of weight load that you need for your home. And I can tell you, it's gonna be much heavier than other homes down in the city. And because of this, the type of beams, whether that's wood or iron, is going to add a significant cost to your building. That brings us into our next topic, and that's roof lines. So um, roof lines, every different pitch or change or dormer or even the placement of your chimney is going to create a pinch point for snow. And so you really want to consider how the snow is falling off your roof when designing that roof line. Really, the standard A-frame with the chimney at the top is going to give you the least amount of problems for years to come. Talking about snow coming off roofs is going to bring us into our next topic about placement of your home on your lot. Most lots on Snoqualmie Pass average between 7,000 and 10,000 square feet, so they're not very large. And you really have got to consider your neighbors when you're thinking about the snow shed coming off of your roof. There's been some not so friendly neighborly conversations and lawsuits from people building homes where the snow is falling off their roof and busting out their neighbor's windows. So your pitch and where you put place your home on your lot is going to save you that headache. You also need to consider snow removal. There's many of snow removal companies up on Snoqualmie Pass, but the thing is they don't actually remove the snow. They just push it to somewhere else on your lot so you have access to your home. So considering how close your home is to the main road and the size of your driveway is going to make a difference. Now let's start talking about the building process. So you have to understand a little bit about the geology of Snoqualmie Pass. And uh, Snoqualmie Pass had two glaciers that um, came down from Denny Mountain. And this created some different landscape terrain that you're going to run into when you're doing your dig. So a lot of the land back at Alpental Valley has really large, almost car-sized boulders, which is something that can be unexpected when you're preparing for your foundation. Now, once you come towards the west side, or I'm sorry, the east side of Snoqualmie Pass, you're gonna start seeing some more flat land and more of the drainage from that snow. So you could end up with a really wet lot, which isn't always bad, but you're going to have to prepare for some external drainage, such as French drains, to keep your foundation and the bottom of your house dry. That brings us into our next topic, which is when you can even start digging. So to build a home on Snoqualmie Pass, it typically takes about two years. By the time that you've received the lot, purchased it, 
and done your permitting, there's a very short window of when the land is dry enough to start doing your dig. And that typically doesn't happen until end of June, beginning of July, and then goes to about October. Um, and then you've got to be really choosy about when you're going to start the rest of your build. If you have done your foundation later in summer, you might want to consider putting off the rest of your build till the next summer. And that's because building with snowfall can add a lot of extra cost of uh, contractors having to remove snow just to start their work. Sometimes that can take half a day to do. So it's important just to be really patient with this process because um, it's all about getting it right. Now we should probably talk about general contractors and there are a couple of amazing custom home builders that actually reside on Snoqualmie Pass and know the challenges that they're going to run across. If that's the route that you're gonna go though, I recommend talking to them early because they can be booked out a couple of years. You really need to consider the outside labor and other contractors that are coming to Snoqualmie Pass because you're pulling your talent from either the North Bend Seattle area or the Clean Elm area, there's quite a bit of a commute time there. And a lot of times, because they have so much work closer to home, they're gonna put this project behind or um, they're not going to get on it as quickly as possible. So just understand that contractors can be a bit of a headache just because of the commute time. It's also common for contractors to add commute fees to your bill. Since we touched on the extra added cost from contractors, I think it's good to mention as well some of the extra holding costs that happen on Snoqualmie Pass. And um, some lots already have a hookup fee purchased, which we get transferred to you. But if you need to hook up to utility, you can expect a bill around $35,000 for water and sewer. And then once you have um, purchased that lot and paid that hookup fee, the standard monthly base bill from the utility district is about $100 a month. So just something to budget for. Now that we have talked about the different locations on Snoqualmie Pass, things to consider when designing your home, how to keep your neighbor happy, and added costs that are just overseen. If you find this information helpful and you're thinking about buying or building on Snoqualmie Pass, make sure to give us our call. Our information is in the description.